What's up everybody, Victor here. It's time for yet another nation guide, this one being for Riga. Now before I begin the guide itself, I do want to point out there is some RNG here, and I'll point out exactly the places where you might have to restart. Fortunately, there's only a couple of them, but I do want to point out what they are. So be aware, if you follow this guide, you may still have to restart, even if you did everything right. With that being said, let's dive right on in. To set up your country, the first thing you need to do is simply go to your army, hire a general, and put them in charge, and it does not matter if they're good or not, because right after that you're going to be seizing crown land, and because you don't have the loyalty for this, you're going to be triggering a revolt. Now usually this is between three and 4,000 troops that you're fighting, but as you can see, they have a general as well, and if they roll a decent one, you're going to be taking a lot of casualties, even though you will absolutely win. So just be sure you have a general before you trigger this. Otherwise, as far as privileges, I do strongly recommend Religious Diplomats, because this will give you the 25 opinion boost to get alliances early on. Everything else, it's kind of up to you. Just do nothing that will give the burgers over 50% influence. So either do not grant supremacy over the Archbishopric, and you can grant a one or two things out of here, or do not grant anything to the burgers, and you can grant supremacy over the Archbishopric. As you can see which one I went with, it's completely up to you though. And do not summon the Diet if you are going to be granting anything because that will bump them over 50%. You are not doing so because this mission requires them to have less than 50% influence. So once this is done, you can go on as normal, just don't do it before then. With that being done, let's talk about the economy. Your economy is pretty quick and easy to set up. You're simply going to come in here and drop the army maintenance down to zero. Since you're already in a fight, you're not going to suddenly lose morale, so don't worry about that. And you're going to mothball your fort. You're not going to need it on for any real length of time. But you cannot delete it because this mission requires you to have the highest level of fort possible, given your current technology, which means if you delete it, you're going to have to spend 200 ducats to rebuild it. So just mothball it. Once that's done, you're going to take your navy here, you're going to take the two light ships, and you're going to have them protect trade in the Baltic node. The rest of them, just mothball them. Do not sell them, do not delete them, because by doing so, you're making your navy weaker, which will make it so other people are less likely to ally you. Once that's done, your economy is basically set up, and it's time to unpause. Once you have this pop up the next day, you're picking the papal protege. The reason why is you have another mission in here that requires you to have 25 Papal Influence, and this gets you on that path. Once that's done, though, it's simply time to start working on Diplomacy. So let's go ahead and talk about that. So your Diplomacy is going to be guided almost entirely by who hates the Teutonic Order, and that's the people on top here. So Brandenburg, Bohemia, and Poland are your potential allies. Poland, you always want first. So start improving relations with them. After that, you have Bohemia, who is, in this game, rival to Poland, so I won't be able to pick them up as well, but I do want to have them with high opinion so I can pick them up as an ally once I inevitably lose Poland. And then finally Brandenburg. Do not join the HRE immediately, you will lose a diplomat and it'll slow you down in terms of getting these guys on your side. Once you have them assigned like that, come in here, switch this over to improve relations, because that'll help you get these allies faster so you can move on to other things. With that done, it's simply a waiting game for a couple of years, so I'm going to pause the recording while I get to the next point where I can move on to other people, or once I have these allies, and I'll bring you guys back when it's time to talk some more. I'll see you in just a second. And welcome back, everybody. So I have Poland to the maximum amount of improved relations, and I scornfully insulted their rival, but it wasn't enough to make them flip friendly, and unfortunately that's pretty common. So we'll get to how you're supposed to handle that in a second. The first things first, we just completed Connect with the Hansa because we allied them, so now we're able to leave their trade league. You need to do this as soon as you possibly can, because this will make it so you actually have trade power in the Baltic, and in the Lubeck trade node, so you can complete these missions as well. Now I'm going to increase my maintenance because I need to seize land yet again in about two months, so I need to be ready to fight that, and it's time for me to start improving relations with Austria. So I'm going to do that as well. So I'm going to pause the recording again and bring you guys back once I'm ready to complete these missions, because basically what I'm doing is I'm completing this mission, and then I'm joining the Empire, and then once I have the crown land at 30 by seizing land one more time, I am then able to grant the private trade fleets to let it so I can complete these missions as well. So I'll see you guys in just a second. 
And welcome back. So it's a couple months later. I scornfully insulted France, joined the Empire, seized land, and beat the 5,000-ish troops that got spawned out of that. So now I'm able to complete the city against the state, which, as you can see here, will not only give me a lot of modifiers in Riga, it'll also give me a cathedral, which is really, really nice. And don't complete this mission until you're actually ready to declare, because it does have timed CBs. And if you can't pull it off immediately, it's going to be somewhat annoying. Once that's done, though, you're now able to complete compete with the Swedes, and I didn't even have to grant the burger trade here, which means I'll have 120 ducats to work with. And that's exactly what you need. Because Poland still isn't able to ally you, and then usually it's going to be about five to eight reasons for them to ally you, you need to have a substantial amount of money because you need to do two things. First off, you're going to have to hire more troops. And second, you're going to have to hire a diplomatic reputation advisor. And this is not guaranteed to spawn. Which means, having this guy here, definitely nice, and makes it so I can ally them immediately. Your game, you might have to go up to 12 or even 14 force limit and have that guy just to make Poland ally you. No matter what you have to do, get Poland ally you as soon as you possibly can. Because they are the ones that are going to give you the Teutonic Order. Once that's done, though, you can go ahead and pull off of this, and now focus on completing the rest of the missions right here, so improve with the Pope, and get your Mercantilism up by two, or sorry, yeah, by two, and then have trade power in the Lubeck trade node. So I'm going to go ahead and send my ships over there to do that, while I'm taking time to build up favors with Poland. So as soon as I possibly can, I'm going to send here to Curry favors to make it faster, and also I'm going to try and improve relations and ally Wolgast. Even though they may not want to necessarily go in on the Teutonic Order, I want them as an ally, and I'll explain why in a bit. But for now, I'm going to pause the recording. See you guys soon. And welcome back, everybody. So I had to restart due to RNG, and I will get into what caused that restart later. But for now, I wanted to just give you an update on how this game is going and how the last one went, so you can understand what's coming for you. So in this game, I have Poland, Bohemia, and Brandenburg as allies that will come in on the Teutonic Order and Wolgast, who is an ally that will not. In the other game, I had Denmark as an ally and not Wolgast. In this game, however, well, Denmark allied the Teutonic Order, and they usually will. Out of the some odd 90 test runs I did as Riga, about 80 of them, Denmark allied the Teutonic Order and was willing to defend them. The only reason they're not willing to now is because, well, Ingolstadt fall under reunion with Austria, and Denmark contested it, and as you can see, lost handily. So they're not willing to come in and get smacked again. So if you're going to attack them, you are likely to, going to have to fight through Denmark, which is why you want to have Poland backing you up, if not for also having a truce with them. Now you are going to attack the Teutonic Order, not the Livonian Order, but you are still going to co-belligerate the Livonian Order if you can. The other thing that's RNG is that Muscovy or Denmark could guarantee the Livonian Order. If it's Denmark and they're coming in with the Teutonic Order, it doesn't matter. However, if it's Muscovy, either allied or guaranteeing the Livonian Order to protect them against Poland or Denmark, you can't co-belligerate them. And that's unfortunate because they are more than 50% war score, meaning you'll have to just take a couple of bits of land from them and then come back for the rest later. Which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. For now, however, I don't have to deal with that, so I'm going to be declaring, because Denmark won't come in, this should be very easy. However, the other thing that's RNG is that in the middle of this war, Muscovy will attack the Livonian Order, meaning that you are in a race to see if you can get this land or if Muscovy will instead. So try and get Raval and Leafland if nothing else, because that is what your first mission largely requires. If the Livonians don't exist, as long as you control Raval and Leafland, you can complete this mission. So just focus on these two, and get the rest if you possibly can. If they do attack in the middle of the war, do not vassalize and piece them out until after Muscovy gets the unconditional surrender from the Livonian Order by knocking out all of their other allies, which is just the Teutonic Order, and then they'll piece out, taking land, and then you can subjugate them and keep the rest of the land. With all that being said, though, I need to pause the recording because I actually need to get to the end of this war and then I can talk about what actually caused me to restart. I'll see you guys then.
And welcome back, everybody. As you can see, Ossal is owned by Muscovy at this point because they attacked the Livonians during that war and were able to get it off of them because the Livonians unconditionally surrendered. And the Teutonic Order is about to become my vassal. However, as you can see, I'm going to get a coalition. Here's the thing. One of the things that can make you have to restart is if the Teutonic Order does not give up these two provinces and they occupy Berlin or occupy Brandenburg enough to make them peace out, they will usually take several provinces in the HRE. Meaning you can still subjugate them because it caps out at 90% of war score to get them as a vassal, but it drives up the amount of aggressive expansion you're going to get. Which means you could have a lot of people on here because you're getting a lot out of taking the Livonians as a vassal, and then even more over here, to where even now, I had Austria, Hungary, and Muscovy on this list originally. So you need to go through there and make certain that you're improving relations with anybody that could try and join this coalition. Denmark, Muscovy, Hungary, Austria, Bohemia, anybody, to try and keep them out of it. Because that's what had me have to restart before, because they ended up taking all of this, Meaning that when I, when I vassalized them, I had the entire HRE in a coalition. Which, if you're going to do that, is incredibly frustrating. And as you can see, you're probably not going to get any of the occupation over here unless you're actively fighting for it. And it's generally just not worth it. If you can get away with not having to do it, absolutely do so. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and peace out. Now I'm on the clock. The reason why is because while I am in the HRE, meaning that Poland cannot attack me without drawing in Austria, they can attack the Teutonic Order, and they are going to. So I need to find strong enough allies to at least make it so Poland will not attack me. If I can pick up somebody like Muscovy, absolutely will do so. Unfortunately, they really want my provinces, and there's a lot of aggressive expansion. So I have quite a long time to get them up, but I also have to find other people Denmark can be an option, depending on who you end up allying. So if Bohemia and Poland break, I might pick them up. But I'm going to have to pause it and bring you guys back once I know who's going to end up trying to protect me from being destroyed by the Polish. So I'll see you guys in just a second. So I just realized that I didn't talk about something at the beginning of the video that really ought to be discussed. So let's talk about it now. Do not rival anybody at the start of the game. The reason why is the only people that you can rival are the Livonian Order and you don't want to rival them. While they will give you some power projection when you do subjugate them, there is a slight problem with that. Specifically, they'll get extra liberty desire if you force vassalize a person that used to be your rival. They get an extra about 20% in this case. And as you can see here, you don't have 20% you can spare. So do not rival the Livonian Order at the start of the game because you're just making your life more difficult. With that being said, see you guys in a little bit. And here's the CD key for this video. If you want to have a copy of Descenders for yourself, just be the first person to redeem a product on Steam, enter this code, and if you're the first person, you get it. All I ask that you do is please leave a comment on this video that you were the one that redeemed the game. With that being said, let's get back to the video. Welcome back, everybody. So unfortunately, I was not able to pick up Muscovy as an alliance. The reason why is because I did not let them take more land off the Livonian Order. They want that land, so it's suppressing my opinion with them. And they will usually flip friendly at about a hundred positive opinion. The problem is, is since I can't get there, they won't ally me. Also in part because they rivaled Austria, and I was able to pick up Austria-Hungary as an alliance to keep the Poles from attacking me. As a result, I can't get this one province without a war. If you want to go the opposite direction, you want to pick up Muscovy as an alliance instead to protect against the Poles, and to attack them later on for your mission tree, you have to let them take more land out of the Livonian Order, and then use Return Core Province to pick these provinces back up. Be aware, though, that they can still break that alliance because they still want this land. So you'll have to feed them more land somewhere else and make them really like you so that you can pick it up before they expire because these cores only last 50 years. If you don't get them all in time, you'll have to integrate the Livonian Order and then release Estonia and release Latigalia so you can end up getting the rest of them. But these two provinces here, you'll have to get these as the Livonian Order or you won't get them otherwise. Everything else that you need to do for your mission tree down this path is just take these provinces out of Lithuania, 
which you can do with Muscovy or Austria or whoever it is that you end up allying because usually they'll come in and fight the Poles. Now that I have Austrian protection against Polish aggression, it's time to start looking at further expansion. Now, Godlin you should target because, first off, it's a decent province. It really is, with a decent monument. But also, if they're pirates, you just want them to stop raiding you. And then you have the HRE, because those are your main targets to start going after, and then you have Sweden if they break independence, or if Denmark loses any of their strong allies. In this game, they're allied to Muscovy, and I don't want to be dealing with that. So, hopefully they get their independence and I can attack them after that. Now, during that time, when I'm waiting for those claims, or I'm waiting to see who I should attack, go into your decisions and dissolve the Livonian bishoprics. You need to do this for this mission. However, do not purchase the bishoprics. It might seem enticing to just spend 100 ducats, because you make a lot as Riga for whatever reason, and just get rid of it that way. The thing is, is that the purchase of a bishopric event makes you pay more. So you'll pay 100 ducats just to fire this event, but then to have them revoke, say, the Dorped one right here, which is usually around 12 to 14,000 rebels, that's 450 ducats. So you're spending 550 ducats to not fight 12,000 rebels. Just fight the rebels. They're not that dangerous. Instead of wasting all this money, just fight them. And if you need to wait to, f to trigger this so you can have a larger army, just wait. You will eventually get there because you do have this mission down here where once you have everything built up, marketplace, workshop, barracks, and temple, you will have a lot of bonuses that will let you fight anything that gets fired here. So with that being said, I'm going to pause the recording because I need to wait because while I was fortunate in my Teutonic War, my starting ruler who sucks just won't die. I don't know why. I don't know how he's still alive, but he just won't die. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Welcome back. So I swapped out my allies and replaced Bohemia with Denmark and Austria with Muscovy. And Muscovy was willing to ally me after I broke relations with Austria. I scornfully insulted their rivals. I improved relations with them to the max. I had all of my aggressive expansion decay to nothing. And then I sent them a bunch of money. Because, well, again, you're making boatloads of money. So as soon as you possibly can, use it to make Muscovy like you. And they allied me. Got my 10 favors so I could get back also, and then I got 10 more so I'm able to attack Poland and bring them all in. Which means I'm going to get these two states, which is what I'm aiming for. So, just take your time, build up, use your mission tree to become the massive powerhouse that you can be as Riga. Pick the right allies, because Austria would not help me against Poland, and neither would Bohemia, which is why I swapped them out. But once you're ready to go, go ahead and declare and take these states so you can end up moving through your mission tree. So I'm going to see you guys in just a little bit because I need to pause the recording for a bit. See you then. And welcome back, everybody. So several decades have passed in the game since you were last here, and an entire day in real life, in fact, because I had to stop recording. But now's the time when we shift from a starting moves perspective into a mid-game perspective. Because there's a lot of choices that you have as Riga, and I kind of want to cover them in this guide. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. The first of these choices that you have available to you is simply how many provinces do you own directly and where they happen to be. The reason why is because you do get plenty of bonuses out of Develop Our City, this mission right down here. The problem is, is that you lose them if you ever go above five provinces in Europe, and it only really helps you keep up and be a force to be reckoned with in the early and early mid game. Which means you're going to be outscaled if you do not just ignore these benefits and keep expanding, or in the alternative, expand outside of Europe. And that's really what you have to choose at this point. If you wish, you can absolutely go colonial, colonize a province over here, move your capital if you want to, and start conquering your way and building a base of operations in the new world, so that you don't have to worry about losing the benefit, or you can do the same thing in, your, in Africa or in Asia or wherever you happen to want to be, because it only counts those five provinces in Europe. So you can keep your bonuses and just keep your vassals here. The other option is simply to integrate Prussia and the Livonian Order and play just a normal European game. Which you choose to do is entirely up to you. But now that that's been said, let's now talk about religion. 
I do want to point out that if you are remaining a small Riga and not going into the New World or into Africa and you're just going to remain here in the Baltic, then you're only going to be able to really expand by feeding Prussia or feeding the Livonian Order. The reason why is you get Liberty Desire reductions with them, but they don't apply to any other vassal. Meaning Saxony here that's only four provinces and Rugen which is only one, they're super disloyal because they're getting all of their Liberty Desire based off of Prussian and Livonian strength. So don't anticipate being able to expand with any other options other than feeding Prussia and the Livonian Order until eventually you annex them anyway. With that being said, let's now turn to religion. When playing as Riga, you're not just picking a religion based off of the benefits that you get out of that religion itself. You're also basing it on what government reform you're going to have from your mission tree. As a Catholic, you get Blessed Plutocracy. This will give you one free merchant, two yearly papal influence, and the ability to sell 50 of those papal influence points to another country that is not a subject, and they will give you three months worth of their total income, so tax, trade, and production. In exchange, they will get one stability and 10 prestige points. Obviously, this isn't ideal though. While it is nice to have the extra money coming in, at the same time, you're giving up one of these papal clicks which means you're giving up manpower, you're giving up morale, you're giving up improved relations to get rid of coalitions, or easier diplomatic annexation. These are very strong things to have, and you're giving it up for three months worth of somebody's income, and you're making it so they don't have to spend as much admin power. However, if you flip your religion to, let's say, reformed, this gives you a new type of government, because it works and gives you this new government if you are Anglican, if you are Protestant, Reformed, or Hussite. And this one gives you 10% development cost reduction, an extra advisor, 0.5 monthly fervor, or 15 uh, extra church power, and it makes it easier to enforce religion in war. On top of that though, instead of the indulgences, you have something else. Specifically, you have the ability to propagate religion. Once your preferred religion is the dominant one in that node and you have over 50% trade power there, you can make it so other provinces in the area flip to your religion. And it will do this throughout the Age of Discovery or the Age of Reformation. Meaning the sooner you do this, the easier it will be for you to flip whatever you want into whatever you want. Why does this matter? Because if you really want to be Anglican, if you move fast enough, you can use a war against Denmark, to take land off of Norway and invade England and become Anglican that way. And then use that and your trade power over here to make Anglican start spreading throughout the HRE, throughout wherever you want it to go. Because on top of both of those, you do have an extra benefit. You have a war against heresy that does not require you to border anybody. Once you have that, you're able to attack anybody you want and because you have the extra 33%, means that you can enforce religion on people up to, I believe it's 133 war score. Meaning, somebody like Lubeck, I can do it too. Somebody like Norway, I can do it too. They're small enough. Meaning I can make all of these guys suddenly reformed. Just because I can. But because you have a limitation on that propagate religion, you kind of need to know what you're planning on doing before you go into it. And it is very nice to have that plan ahead of time because stacking this government reform with that 10% development cost with either Anglican with another 10% or even reformed that has a 10% means you're able to play stupidly tall. All you need at that point is anyone with national ideas with development cost and you're back to the old dev meta. A few things to keep in mind, however. First, if you're going to be forming any other country, such as Hanover or Prussia or anybody, make certain that before you flip over, if you're going to purchase the electorate, you do so because you have to be Catholic to purchase it. Otherwise, you have to be very, very nice to the emperor and then maybe he'll do it. So if you're gonna save up the money to do it, do it before you flip religions. Second, if you're going to be using propagate religion, it only works on Catholics, Anglicans, Hussites, Protestants, and the reformed religion. 
In other words, it'll be the Catholics and any of the Reformation religions. So it does not work on Orthodox provinces, it does not work on Muslim provinces, it does not work on any other religious group. So just the Catholics and the Reformation ones. Lastly, you do have an extra peace deal option with this government reform. It's called Raid Churches. This is what you have to do to get the Purify the Temple achievement. You have to be in a war against the Papal States, doesn't matter if they're the main target or not, and you're once you're done attacking them, you have a peace deal option for about 25 war score, if I remember correctly. After you've pieced them out and you take that, what it will do is it'll give you 25 fervor points, or 50 church power points if you're Protestant, and you'll get the achievement. So this is not something you want to do all the time with anybody else, but it is how you get the achievement, and I just simply wanted to explain that, because it's not hard to usually beat the Pope in a future war once you've done this. It's just something to keep in mind. The last thing I need to cover in this guide before I wrap it up is simply what to expect when you form Livonia or Prussia, because those are the two tags that you're likely to form when you integrate these two vassals here. Easiest way to show that is in non-Iron Man mode, so let's go ahead and just dive in. If you choose to form Livonia, you absolutely can. You do get some benefits out of it. The problem is, is that you get the worst end of both mission trees that you can get as Livonia. You'll get the left-hand side of the monarchy tree, which is just colonial benefits, and the right-hand side will be the monastic order version, which means you do not get the make-your-own-government reform from the right-hand side of the monarchy tree, nor do you get from the left-hand side of the monastic order tree all the massive amounts of manpower that you would get. Meaning, you kind of have the worst of both worlds. The only real benefit you get out of it is some decent ideas, and you also get the Latvian and Estonian culture group as accepted cultures, which is not exactly huge. On the other hand, Prussia is a lot better of an option. If you choose to form Prussia, you, instead of having a blending of mission trees, what you get instead is you get the Brandenburg missions if you form Prussia which means you'll be able to get things like claims throughout the HRE, meaning you're going to be able to expand easier moving into the West, which is exactly the direction you should be wanting to go. On top of that, since you are a theocracy, when you end up converting over, because you'll have to be one of the reforming religions, so Protestant or Reformed, etc., you'll have the militaristic divine state as your government reform, which means you do have the militarization mechanic and you have all the benefits that you would have as if you were the Teutonic Order reforming into Prussia. Meaning you will be the military dominating force in Europe because that's what Prussia just is. So you do have the benefits of Prussia with some extra claims and things you can get out as if you were playing Brandenburg if you form Prussia, but Livonia just isn't worth your time. And I wanted to make sure you guys were aware of that so you don't end up forming Livonia and realizing you don't have any of its real benefits. With all that being said, that's pretty much it for this Riga guide. If you find this helpful or you're going to use it in your game, like and subscribe. I'm definitely making more nation guides and I'm slowly making my way through Scandinavia and then I'm going to be probably heading to Italy. If you want me to cover a specific country, or you're having a certain kind of problem, let me know in a comment below. More than happy to help, and I'm always looking for next nations that you guys want me to cover. With all that being said, though, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day.